Hey folks, we're uh, back out in the garage with Easy Jeezy. We're on this transmission project. Uh, we're just going to forge ahead here, and uh, I want to. This was an unknown transmission. Uh, there's still a lot that I can explain to you and show you uh, because this is kind of the situation that you're going to be getting into. Uh, if you're watching this video and looking for this information, you have problems with yours. And uh, it, it may not be a, a total destruction type thing uh, where you've really, you know, broke anything. Generally it is, uh, you know, it, it jumps out of reverse gear or pops out of fourth or first, whatever, when you let off, when you press down. And, and we'll stick to that aspect of it and uh, keep it a little bit simpler. And uh, maybe uh, we'll try again at a later date. I need to do more research. But one of the things that I want to emphasize here in my trying to, to show you guys this stuff, uh, I ran into... Uh, you know, my, my work area got cluttered. I got more than one transmission. I'm trying to show too much, and I really wasn't thinking it through, and now I'm kind of, you know, I'm, I'm right on the ragged edge here. You know, I hope I haven't mixed up stuff. This shim is critical. This this is important, and, and you don't, if things have been running in a transmission for a certain period of time, you don't want to be making a lot of changes to it. This is your the depth for your pinion gear, and I had two... Uh, spacers here these are uh, what you use to set the depth and they usually have it uh, written right here on the end of the, the pinion and on this late model at least the older ones did this late model one here that I've got in front of me this one doesn't have that uh, writing inscription on here and I recall reading someplace that the that the later ones didn't have that but we're not going to change that the important thing is to uh, to get uh, it Keep things, keep your parts together. Stay organized. Keep your work area clean. This is kind of a small bench to actually be doing on this, but it's uh, it's it's what I got right now. So anyhow, we're gonna keep moving. Now, one of the things, uh, okay, you're gonna pull your your gear stack out in one piece like this. You're gonna take a uh, 11 millimeter wrench, and you need to uh, completely remove these uh, shift fork. Uh, bolts because there is a, a groove in the shift shaft that e if, you, if you loosen it, it, it's, it might move just a little bit because that's how you get your uh, adjustments and things, but it's not going to allow you to disassemble the stacks. And the book calls out uh, removing the shift shafts by removing these, these uh, plugs here in the side. I don't recommend you do that. I did it one time, and that was the end of that. Uh, it's a little bit more of a struggle this way, but I'll show you how I do it. And we're just going to take, I already loosened them up uh, weeks ago. It seems like this thing's been going on forever. It's been kind of haunting me too, so let's just get it over with and get this thing back together and uh, not worry about, uh, you know, putting that 437 in here. Okay, so we've got all our shift fork bolts out and uh, we've got uh, this shim we're gonna not lose track of it we're gonna make ourselves a little pile for this transmission right here then we're going to uh, uh, we're gonna pull off these uh, snap rings here on the back and uh, I've got this old gasket stuck on here I'll have to uh, scrape that off clean that off later although part of it is sticking right in the over this uh, this other piece right here and uh, I put uh, one of the habits I have I'm sure a lot of people do the same thing to uh, to keep track of your nuts and bolts as soon as I get an opportunity rather than just throwing things I mean when when you do something often enough you can just throw everything in a coffee can or however you like to do it but I will put the uh, nuts and bolts back where I got them, uh, sometimes in the same area, and here I've stacked a bunch of washers up, and uh, I take all these uh, nuts. Uh, I know uh, uh, I'm. Uh, some guys like to get the new uh, nut and bolt kits with the nylock nuts and stuff, and if if that's what you want to do, that's okay too. Uh, that works fine. I personally I have a tendency to favor the steel. And these older, uh, the nuts and bolts that came with the transmission. But uh, I've been rereading some of my books, 
and uh, ran across some interesting information. Uh, one of the things that led to that was that uh, 129 or 12.9 that was on that metric bolt with that new ring and pinion. And that is a hardness designation that, uh, uh, like, it's the same as what we use, you know, grade 2 being real soft, uh, Society Automotive Engineer, uh, that's the common one for construction and building things, and then you had your, uh, you know, grade 6, grade 8, grade 10, and that uh, 12.9 is uh, a grade of hardness along that same ladder of increments there so okay the next thing we're going to do is take these snap rings off and i'm going to take it over to the uh, press over here and put a little pressure down on this to relieve uh, to relieve the pressure on one of these and i believe it's this one right here that has got the uh, yeah this one's got the spring pressure on it so we're going to put a little pressure down because we don't want to deform those snap rings we're going to reuse them we're going to reuse a lot of this stuff. Uh, basically, we're just going into this check it, uh, checking this stuff. And one of the things that, uh, one of the reasons why this is mandatory is you looking at this, uh, see that right there? That's your pinion bearing, right? You think, oh boy, that sure is running nice and smooth. Well, it's supposed to have preload on it, and you have to dig down through the stack to get to the nut to use this wrench because that is supposed to have a load on it, even a used one. A new one is supposed to have a higher load than a used one. But, uh, yeah, that, that seems smooth and nice because uh, I had this in the solvent tank and uh, put a little oil on it and sprayed it down. Uh, but uh, it's not supposed to turn that free. So we're going to change that pressure. And in reality, even because we have this shim in here, that's going to change the depth of the stack that's going to change the set on the pinion. It's either going to put it back to where it originally was, but I, I have a feeling it's, it's going to change things a little bit. And uh, when you're dealing with stuff like this, a little bit means a lot. So uh, let me get you set up by the, uh, by the press and we'll uh, continue on. You know, maybe we'll just call this a segment. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thanks for subbing. Easy Jeezy out. We'll do it in short segments that way.